All right, boys, it's time. The long awaited departure of this 450B I've been working on for the last few months. We're finally taking her to the property. So the primary reason for purchasing this and fixing it was to take it to our mountain property to do some development, build some roads, build some landings, things like that. We got 35 acres and none of it is flat. So a dozer with a six way is key. She's ready. No more changes needed, no more work needed. Just ready to go push dirt. Let's get it loaded up. This is why I like welding hooks on all my crap. It just makes securement very easy. So we got the hooks we welded on the blade. Got the factory John Deere tie down point up front and then in the back here, I got my custom bracket that's got the uh, pull hooks on it. So we got four 5 16 chains to the tractor, two to the blade, should be plenty. Is anything that can fly off, might fly off. So really the air, air cleaner and uh, lower portion of the seat here. I'm gonna put this in the truck because losing this on the highway really pissed me off. little test ride went well it's heavy uh, power wise we're gonna do all right it felt okay but brake wise I was not impressed and I know this trailer has really good brakes did some troubleshooting on my truck found that I have a pretty substantial voltage drop between the rear harness and the seven-way plug back here found a couple loose connections fixed them up the trailer brakes draw like 10.8 amps now 11 amps it should really be 12 so we're not at full braking power but i think we're at enough to make it happen uh we're all loaded up time to go take a nap and when the sun goes down we're rolling we got 414 mountainous miles ahead of us so if all goes well i'll see you at the sunrise well this is going just about as bad as it gets we're about an hour and a half in, and I'm down to four cylinders. I got a million codes for injector control circuits, and I believe we have a pending Fickham failure, which isn't super common on an LB7. Of course, this one's original with 300,000 miles on it. We're gonna cool her down with a cold beer, because I don't really have anything else to dump on it. I'm not gonna get to drink this beer if we don't get there. So I'm actually turning around and it'll probably take us almost three hours to get back to the shop. But we're gonna see if we can limp this thing home because a tow with all this on the back is not gonna be a good time at all. So the truck still moves. It's in a four cylinder limp mode. 
uh, it'll rev up to 2,000 RPMs, make like five pounds of boost, and I can still move in first and second gear if the hill is not too bad. So let's see what happens. So after sitting for a couple minutes and dumping a beer on it, no fuel gauge still, but we have all eight cylinders again. So we're gonna get as far as we can before the Fickham overheats. I did ohm out the injectors under the hood. Everything looks good, there's no shorts there. Um, it runs perfect and then all of a sudden it drops four cylinders and runs a pretty serious limp mode. So it's gonna be a long ride home. Well, we made it about 10 miles and we're back in limp mode. Foot to the floor, third gear, just crested a hill. Holding 20 miles an hour. Luckily, not a lot of traffic right now. How many miles are we from home? 58 miles from home. An hour and 18. We'll see about that. Oof, this is tough. I'm gonna have to pull over and douse her with another beer. Well, I'm running with the hood partially unlatched. Poured another beer on the Fickham, gave her five minutes to cool down, and we're pulling on all eight cylinders again, and the fuel gauge came back to life. So we're gonna enjoy this moment while it lasts, and then we'll do it again next time it takes a dump. Well, she's three beers in. We are closer to home. We are 19 miles, 30 minutes from home if we were going full speed. I get about eight miles out of a beer before the Fickham gets hot again and, and knocks me out. So we're climbing this stupid hill in second gear. I might be in creeper gear now. Yep, doesn't look like I'm gonna make it. Now I gotta creep. So basically I'm stuck at six miles an hour here. Climbing some long mountains. All right, so we made it to the top of the hill. Grab a fresh bush. Now we're running with the hood open here just to get a little more airflow through here. Crack this, aim for the thickum. Give it a nice slow drizzle. I think you'd call me a liar if I told you this, but this will be our fourth beer. Put that in the beer compartment. Drop it down one click. Let's see if she fires on all eight again. Probably not, because I'm recording. Look at that. All eight cylinders, full horsepower. Fuel gauge works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But I can get over that. So we'll get another six six to 10 miles out of that beer. We'll pull over, we'll do it again until we get home. I brought a 30 rack. You guys are not gonna believe this. It's 311. I'm home, I'm in the front yard, and that's it. That's where she called it quits. <clears throat> it, started, it started acting up on my road, running out of power. I ended up getting in here in creeper gear four low, and I didn't even make it to my driveway, but I'm home. I don't even know what to think about tonight. I gotta go to sleep and process this and come up with a game plan. Beer cans everywhere. I just don't understand. A three hour nap. We're back at this freaking thing. Got the Fickham out. I went through two GM troubleshooting trees. Everything checks out. And of course it all leads to replace Fickham. Saturday morning, I'm having trouble getting one, so I pulled this thing apart and I already scraped off all the green crusties, but this bank of transistors here is not looking so hot. 
But you can see here, some moisture got in this at some point. And this is after I've already cleaned it with a brush a couple times. Doing some reading, it looks like the, the first four are one bank, first four are the other bank. Over here even, you got this leg on this one. Let's see if we can focus on that. Hey, that ain't looking too healthy either. And all that's gotta happen is one of these go open or short for one second. The whole truck's gonna go to limp mode on that respective bank. And I'm also losing the fuel gauge occasionally too, which that's driven out of here too. I mean, I don't know, at this point, I think I'd, I just, I could try to reflow some solder, but I don't think I'm confident enough to drive all these miles with all that weight on the back knowing that some of these components are already compromised. As for fixing this today and getting back on the road, just not seeing that as a plausible, plausible deal for me. All right, we got our new Fickum. It's already almost nine o'clock. I finally found one after posting all day on Facebook groups, calling friends, searching marketplace, searching Craigslist, calling junkyards. I couldn't find one local and I finally get in touch with a guy that was selling a motor and he offered to sell me the Fickham off of that motor unfortunately for 450 bucks it is what it is but ironically his shop is literally 10 minutes from where we broke down last night it's just very ironic I've never been on these roads before and now I'm here twice in 24 hours you just can't make this stuff up let's get this thing installed and let's get back on the road Back to business on the never-ending saga. We got the got the old Fickham here. Part number is not the same. The last digit is a one on mine. It's a seven on this, but you know this is a very early LB7. It's an 01, so I guess that's expected. So I'm gonna fit this thing back in here, fire up, see what happens. <laughs> All right, all is well. Fuel pressure and pulse width is very stable. I think we're good. It's at least running fine on the new Fickham. So I'm gonna let this idle for an hour, try to get it as hot as I can, let the fuel get warm and see if we fixed our problem. Got about an hour and we're gonna go hit the road again. As a contingency plan, I'm gonna clean these components with alcohol. And then we're gonna give this thing a quick bake in the oven at maybe 150 degrees. That way any moisture that is trapped in there hopefully be dissipated. And this will just go in the toolbox as a spare. We know this Fickham works when it's cold. It's just when it gets temperature in it, we lose all of bank too, so. I bet you this thing would work very good, but I'll never trust it again. Deja vu, fueling up again at the same station I came to. To give this another try. Second time's a charm. It's about 11.30 at night. Traffic and all the public BS should be over with, so we're gonna just try it I don't know I'm so discouraged at this point I've never had issues with this truck before and now my trust issues I got trust issues All right, baby, we made it to Maryland. Everything feels good. Everything's running great. I want to knock on wood. 
I think the truck is fixed. Uh, we did we did good there. We'll see how we did on fuel economy, but we are unfortunately only like 180 miles into 414 miles, and we're just getting into the mountains now where it's gonna get crazy, but rolling. We're out here and it's beautiful. The dozer's unloaded. Neighbor was nice enough to let me park on his pad here temporarily. I've got like a two mile drive now to get the trailer onto our property. There's a pretty steep climb that I'm not gonna be able to do it fully loaded. And then we gotta drive back and unfortunately track the dozer like 2.1 miles down this county road here.
right, we are about three quarters of the way to the property. Maybe a little less than three quarter. We have a problem. The right brake is starting to lock up when I'm just driving forward. We're a ways from home here. And as everything's getting hot, I'm noticing that my, oh yeah, there's smoke in there. This right side brake band is too tight and something's swelling up and it's starting to drag a little. And as soon as I felt that, I pulled over. I didn't want to be dragging this thing and smoking it out, but I think it needs to come off like two clicks. The timing is not right. The timing between the clutch and the brake is not right. It's a little aggressive. Not really per John Deere spec, but I think if I come off two clicks here, two detents, we'll be free and ready to rip and it'll probably be adjusted where it needs to be. That's one detent. I'm gonna come off one more to be safe. Now this is one of them things where like, I adjusted this wrong, but I did all this work and now I know how all this works and I'm not intimidated by it because this could be bad. Being stuck on a, a road with a dozer that won't roll is pretty dangerous. Alright, that's two detents off. That should do it. That should be all I need. It just felt like the steering was starting to fight the clutch and when you go to turn you hear the motor bog for a uh, just a split second and a little puff of smoke and then it turns and that means that the brake band was grabbing the drum before the clutches were disengaged so you kind of got to make your own spec and uh just figuring it out on the fly good we're coasting again now let's see if we steer good Maybe I should have just went one click, but this will get us home. All right, let's get back to third gear. that thing but we got mice problems so I'm gonna let him be to our property 2.1 miles on a hard packed gravel road was not pleasant 
way rougher than I thought. I've never run a you know steel track machine. I did not know how violent that was going to be. I didn't even run fourth gear. I was running third, high and low. She made it flawless. Everything's good. I actually did some road repairs on my way in just to get my feet wet. But anyway, this is the moment I have been uh, looking for for the last 10 months. We're here at the property. It's an absolutely beautiful day. The dozer's here. The truck still runs. Sucks that we left Friday at 11 p.m. and I got here Sunday at 7 a.m. after hunting parts and repairing crap, but you know what? We made it, and that's all that matters. boys we're making a mess here I think I've got all the root cut on this side of the stump there doesn't seem to be anything super deep I'm like four feet down but this side the downhill side it's got some hefty 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 here I'm just slowly chipping away at it but I still got a lot to go I got like a six inch main root there but when I bump it it don't budge doesn't budge an inch. Look how deep we have cut and I still don't have this stump out. But I'm going to end the video here because we have a situation, a bad situation. That track is off the dozer. And the track frame is super bent. And tensioner is broken. Not exactly sure what caused this. Probably user error. Maybe it's just old. I don't know, but now it is stuck in a hole seven hours from home and I got to fix this in the woods. So stay tuned for the next video on that one. I feel like I'm on a little bit of a string of bad luck lately. You know, truck break in, just lots of life problems. 
and now this, and now I have a partially dug out stump and an absolutely destroyed property right outside the house here. So, <sighs> but anyway, thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. Let me know what you think about this misery in the comments and I'll see you soon.